just recently download the snapchat camera on my laptop and this is what the video going to be ok lah, tukar tukar Ooh. I think this looks nice so hi guys, it's me Amira here I uploaded my Tab Essex Lite unboxing video 3 months ago and as of right now, I have around 800,000 views and close to around 40 plus questions asking me about my tablet, my screen protector, ODL life with the tablet and what do I think about the S Pen, should I buy a tablet or a laptop or should I buy an iPad or Samsung and this video is to answer all of your questions. Okay, disclaimer. I would just like to clarify that I will not be able to talk about all of the technical stuff so if you're interested in that, I would very much advise you to go and look to other content creators and everything that you see in this video, all of my tablet, where did I get my S Pen, where did I get my case, all of it will be linked in the description box and last but not least, all of my review is So the Samsung Tab S6 Lite was released back in 2020. It comes with the S Pen. It costs around 349 US dollars or 1,699 ringgit. But I bought it from Shopee, which cost me 1,399 ringgit during sale. And yes, like I said, the link is in the description box. But I'm kind of sorry because it's actually already sold out. It's 10.4 inches in size and has 2000 pixel by 1200 pixel resolution. It has octa-core processor, I don't know what that means, and 4 gigabyte of RAM and also 64 gigabyte of storage or you can also purchase 128 gigabyte storage. The tablet also has a micro SD slot if you would like to add more storage and there is dual speaker on both sides of the tablet and a headphone jack. There is an 8 megapixel camera at the back and also a 5 megapixel at the front. Since the S Pen does not need to be charged, you won't get the Bluetooth feature, which frankly I don't think I would use anyway. And the pen also sticks to the side of the tablet magnetically. It has facial recognition instead of a fingerprint reader. Also, the Tab S6 Lite has DAX feature. It was a recent upgrade earlier this year, and when fully charged, the battery can last up to 7 hours. But in my own experience, since I only use this tab for my studying, when I had my classes from 8 to 5 pm, the battery will last me throughout the day and only at night will I need to recharge my battery. And now that I'm having my semester break, I find that for an overnight charge, when also when infrequently used, tablet's battery would last me up to 3 days. So that is the brief summary of the tablet and let's get on with the question. The first question is, is the S Pen comfortable and what was the S Pen experience? Okay, so here I am comparing the S Pen to a st Stadler HP with a pencil and also a regular 0.5mm pen and that you can get from the Eco Shop and also a mild liner highlighter. So just to give a visual idea of the thickness of the S Pen. So as you can see, the S Pen has almost the same uh, width and thickness as the HP with a pencil. And I can also say that the weight of the pen, S Pen and also the wooden pencil is almost the same. So if you would like to gauge how the S Pen will feel in your hands, you can grab a HD wooden pencil and just you know try it out. So it has a flat surface and a button on the curved side. When using the Samsung Nose, the side button acts as an instant eraser. It does take a bit of time for me to get used with the design as my main problem is my thumb would click on the side button and accidentally erase what I had wrote down. So if you are concerned with the writing experience, you can definitely buy the S Pen cover like this white turnip. Ta-da! You can definitely buy an S Pen cover like this white turnip that you can find in Shopee. And yes, I'm also linking it in the description box. Ok, 
Okay. So does the tablet has does the tablet or the S Pen have palm rejection? The S Pen doesn't have palm rejection, but a lot of Android apps does have a setting to turn off finger drawing. So for an example, like the Samsung Notes, you can find the finger drawing off option when you click on the three vertical dots in your notes. And most digital artists on YouTube that use the Android tablet would opt for this artist glove. And this glove is very cheap. It will cost me around 3 ringgit or 5 ringgit if I'm not mistaken. And you can also find it in a lot of online stores. Then last but not least, can you make notes on top of PDF or signature in Word document? Yes, you can. Write on PDF application is available on, in the Google Play Store. But you can also do this with the Samsung Notes. So here is the tutorial. Last question for the S Pen. The S Pen nib, does it wear out when you use a matte screen protector or a paper light protector? Um, I think this question is a perfect segue to our next topic. I have to clarify first that I did not buy the paper light screen protector. Instead, I bought this paper feel screen protector, which essentially feels like a matte screen protector to the touch. Yes, it does make my writing much better and yes, it does wear down the nib since the nib, is, since the nib or the tip uh, of the S Pen is made up of rubber. So here is a close up of the S Pen. Personally for me, for 5 months of usage, I don't think this was that bad. Still, if it bothers you, you can find replacement tips online. One setback is that those tips are made up of plastic and then the original S6 Lite tip is made up of rubber. So the writing experience might not be the same. So the next question is about the video quality for online class. So considering that the front camera has a 5 megapixel camera, the video quality is great to record yourself for resonance. Presentations. And in terms of Google Meet or Zoom, uh, the video and audio quality depends not only on the tablet specs but also on your Wi Fi connection. So, in my opinion, it does work great. The image are all clear and I can also hear my lecturer's voice. Uh, this is a screen record from my AutoCAD class last semester and unfortunately I didn't record the audio for the class but I also did try Google Meet with my friend and here is a side-by-side -side comparison of my screen recording from the tablet and also his screen recording from his end of the Google Meet session. Recording. Oh, ada, ada. So, boleh dengar tak suara I? Boleh, lock and clear. Hmm. Sebab yang pelik ni kan, uh, dia punya kamera tu kat sana. Oh. Ha. So, I, I punya screen block besar kat sini. So, I tengok kat sini. Dia tengok kat sini, so macam I tengok, tengok tempat lain. Okay, and then uh, sekarang ni. So, can this tab share screen on any video conference and, do and doing notes as if I'm a teacher what wanting to share like a mathematic operation. Yes, you can. You can share your Samsung notes to the whole class and talk at the same time. And here is a demo for you. Uh, so the next question is, should you buy a tablet or a laptop first for university or school work? So a lot of you had asked me, uh, is tablet enough for your studies and work? Or, you know, I had just my, I, I had just finished my SPM and I would like to buy either a tablet or a laptop. So which one is better? I'm about to enter a business major or a language major. Um, which one uh, should I buy? Should I buy a tablet or should I buy a laptop? And I think before I answer your question, uh, I would like you to ask yourself these three questions first like number one what kind of course will I be taking and number two what kind of coursework will I do uh, such as is there like any assignment any project any report or lab work do I need to do uh, a lot of artwork or do I need to do a lot of um, a statistical stuff where I need to 
make a lot of charts or something and number three does my course need to use any software so reason as to why I need you to ask these three questions to yourself because a tablet cannot install a software such as AutoCAD, MATLAB or Java or Python. I did find out that there are actually uh, AutoCAD and also MATLAB mobile apps in the Google Play Store but feel free to read the comments, the reviews because a lot of them say that they have really bad experience, very poor experience with their um, application sometimes it wouldn't work sometimes it wouldn't open there's a lot of bug needs a lot of fixing so I feel like if you need to use the software it's much more better for you to invest in a laptop first but if you know that you will not be using any software we can move to the next question which is if i if i have any assignments do i use a laptop or tablet and is the tablet suitable to be used for assignments in words excel or presentation the answer to the first question is i use both because when it comes to handwritten assignment or quiz that you know, before I had the tablet, I would need to write my answers on a piece of paper and then scan with my phone and then I need to export as PDF and send to my lecturer and now that part of the process is replaced with just writing my answers in my tablet, Samsung Notes and then shared to my lecturer directly via email or Google Form. But when it comes to assignments that need to be typed out such as reports or you know mini project reports or you know type type out assignments then I will still use my laptop and my tablet because the way that I work is all of my reports and assignments are uploaded into Google Doc and I prefer to use Google Doc for my first draft of my assignments because number one it can be synced to all devices such as my tablet and also my phone and number two I can share my doc documents to my friend via email and they can have access to edit the report so this will lessen the need of exchanging multiple drafts of the same report to one another and number three Google Doc has how to save because you know have you ever been in you know that situation where you were writing your assignments in Microsoft Word and then suddenly your laptop crash and then you find out that all of your hardware is gone but with Google Doc they will how to save whenever you stop typing and you can close your browser without worrying if you had saved your document or not so like I said I would always start my work with Google Doc first and with this, I can also edit on my tablet anywhere I go without bringing my heavy laptop around. But if you are considering to buy just a tablet, next topic will be comparing the Microsoft Word in the laptop and also the tablet. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Microsoft Word in laptop and tablet. You can definitely see that the app has lesser tab and also options. We can see in the home tab, the text effects and typography and also change case is nowhere to be found. And paragraph box in the laptop's Word, a Microsoft Word is condensed into an icon. And in here you can find the indents and spacing. For the insert tab, the most prominent thing that the app doesn't have is the smart art and charts. Smart art is very useful to create cycles, hierarchies, uh, processes, and also pyramid scheme easily. So unfortunately, the Word app doesn't have this. Next thing is, you can find the page number option either in the header or footer or in the far end of the toolbar, which is the box with a green plus sign. In here, you can find the page number and equations. Another thing that the Word app doesn't have is the symbol insert. And this is crucial where you need to insert the degree Celsius symbol or a copyright sign. For the layout tab, basically everything is here except for the spacing and indent box which is in the home tab. Other tabs that the Word app doesn't have is reference, mailing and also Zotera. So Zotera and reference are commonly used when you need to do citations in your report. So the lack of thereof would probably make it a bit harder for you to do a complete and concise report or thesis. So that is the brief overview of the Microsoft Word. I wish to go through Excel and PowerPoint but this video is getting way too long and also I don't frequently use those software. Therefore, I don't think I could give like a concise comparison between the app and also the software. All in all, the tablet works great 
when you are writing simple assignments uh, or if you are out and about I will need to do some minor edits however personally for me to construct a good report or thesis from start, start to finish I would much prefer to do all of my work in my laptop if anybody would ask me, Mira, would you like to buy a laptop first or a tablet first before you enter university? I would opt for a laptop. And if another person were, you know, to ask me, were to ask me, Mira, can I survive a diploma or metrics or degree life without a tablet? Well, I went through three and a half years of diploma and also my first year of degree without this. You know, I didn't have my tablet at the time. The first time I introduced my tablet into my study routine is in my last semester of my second year degree. So I've only used this for like one semester. So before this came into my life, I've already survived close to four years without it. Though the tablet does come with like a lot of benefits, I think it is still possible for you to ace your metrics, your diploma or your degree without this. So. You know what, don't beat yourself too hard if you still could not afford it. A pen and paper works great for someone with passion in what they are learning, what they are studying. So the next question is, a lot of people ask me, Mira, should I, why is it that you buy an, a Samsung tablet instead of an iPad? And I usually have all of my notes, Tada! I don't know whether you can see it. But all of my notes of me comparing between the Samsung S6 Lite, the iPad, the S7, and also the S6, and also the iPad Air, and also the iPad Pro. For this video, we are just going to compare the iPad 8 generation and also the Samsung Tab S6 Lite. And I will justify why is it that I decided to buy the Samsung Tab S6 Lite. Before wanting to buy a tablet, I uh, asked myself like, Mira, why do you need a tablet? The backstory is back in December, I was at my university. And then uh, nearing Christmas or New Year's, I decided to go back home because I miss my family. Therefore, I only brought like two textbooks, one notebook, my laptop, and also, you know, clothes for me to wear back home. And then when I want to go back to my university, uh, I find that uh, Pahang flooded and the roads were blocked. And when the flood subsided, uh, suddenly we entered a total lockdown so I did not have any of my notes my exercise the only thing that I have was actually my textbook and also my laptop and I find out that I need to start all of my hard work that I did from scratch I need to start all my notes my exercises all of it from scratch and then kind of got me thinking that maybe I should really invest in a tablet and also at the time the iPad uh, study TikTok and also the good notes, the digital note taking what was you know taking the study community by storm and that definitely piqued my interest and made me more attracted with the idea of having a tablet for digital note taking. All because I want all of my notes and my exercise be in one place. So after I asked myself like why do I need a tablet, the next question was what do I want in a tablet? So what I want is a lot of storage very good price and also a tablet where I can uh, use, uh, where I can do digital note taking. So the next tablet that I was looking into was definitely the iPad because it had good notes and also Procreate. Then I look into the price of each iPad. The cheapest iPad that I found was the iPad 8th generation with 32GB which cost around 1,449 ringgit. But of course, the 32GB isn't enough for me and plus the iPad doesn't have any micro SD slot to insert an SD card and increase the storage. So therefore, the next best option is the iPad 8th generation which with 128GB storage for around 1,849 ringgit. But with the student discount, it would cost me 1,769 ringgit. So I did save around, I guess, 90 plus, 100 plus ringgit. How much did I save? 40, 40. I save around 80 ringgit. So the iPad also doesn't come with a stylus. And that will be an additional cost of 490 ringgit for the first generation pen. And then I find out that the Procreate and the Good Notes are not free. So this will add another... 39 ringgit 90 cent for Procreate and 34 ringgit 90 cent for Good Notes. So overall cost would be 2,262 ringgit 80 cent. 
and yeah i could buy a knockoff version of the stylus pen to save more money but that would cost me around 50 to 120 ringgit and that would be 1893 to 1963 ringgit 80 cent so uh that that that's kind of expensive Next thing I look at were the Samsung tablets. The Tab S6 Lite immediately caught my attention because at the time this was still at the time that this was still available in the Samsung store, the cost of the tablet was 1699 ringgit. It had 64 GB of storage, 4 GB RAM and a micro SD slot for added storage. That one was like my the thing that really attracted me the most, the fact that it has a micro SD slot. And then it comes with a freaking stylus. I don't need to spend another 400 ringgit for a stylus. And the best thing is that it actually has the Samsung Notes. And I look into a lot of the Samsung Notes videos before buying this. And I find that what I want in a good notes is already there for me in the Samsung Notes for free. Even then, I actually looked through Shopee and there were Shopee malls that offered the Samsung Galaxy tablet for 1,399 ringgit uh, to 1,599 ringgit. So that saved me 300 ringgit when compared to the normal price of the tablet and also saved me 500 ringgit if I were to buy the iPad because the iPad doesn't have a stylus, I would need to add money for GoodNotes and also Procreate. So because of that, I decided to buy the Samsung Tab S6 Lite. So the last part is what is my review, my five month review and what do I like or dislike about the tablet and you know whether I have any lag or not after using it for close to five months. Um, what I do like about the tablet is that it meets all of my expectations. Now I not only use this tablet for like digital note taking but I also use it when I want to plan out my day and edit all of my YouTube videos and also all of my YouTube thumbnails. Uh, and about lagging, so far yes there were lagging. Uh, for an example, there is a side button on the S Pen and when you use this side button, you can actually uh, activate the shortcut. So sometimes that activation doesn't work, uh, which can be a bit annoying for me. But other than that, uh, when I do a split screen, it does take quite some time for the applications to appear. But for me, I feel like it is understandable because you know it's just 4GB of RAM. So yeah. When you have 4GB of RAM, the tablet would tend to be a bit more slower than you know, a device that has like 8GB of RAM. Other than that, I think the con would be Samsung doesn't release any S Pen replacement nib. You will only be left with cheap S Pen nibs that you can find on online shops. But I heard that the S Pen nib or tips uh, actually feel like plastic oh yeah another person actually asked me mira what do you think about the size of the tablet and for me the personally the size is fine because i often write my notes in a5 notebook so if you have an a5 notebook near you then i think you will get the gist of the you know the length and of the also the height of the tablet the width length height of the tablet other than that that's the end of my review and my long laborious rant of my Samsung Tab S6 Lite. I hope I have answered all of your questions and also make it easier for you to make the decision of whether you should buy a laptop or a tablet or an iPad or a Samsung and yeah I just hope that this video helped you in any way shape or form. So if you like this video I hope you will like, subscribe, comment and if you have any more questions just comment down below and apart from that yeah wherever you are i hope that you are safe and you are healthy please check my other videos too okay all right okay bye guys i spend a nip or tips well i don't think you can take me seriously with all of this <laughs> i'm just reading out my script here <laughs> another trip 39 ringgit 90 39 ringgit 90 cent for procreate pro, pro blah 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 so this